Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. We have a uh, we have a pretty lively uh, group in our chat here, so I think it's going to be a fun they've been, one. <laughs> they've been drinking. How are you doing? They've been drinking. I think is what's happening right now. Um, Navy talk is trash. Oh yeah, you don't you don't like the anchors. I uh, Buckeye Esquire, thank you for the. Uh, we got we got some theme. There's on theme gifts in here, and right now the chat's getting real nervous. I'm gonna keep scrolling up because they were saying some shit. <laughs> Guys, I'm scrolling. Up. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. We're fine. We're fine. Right, let, let, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into our know your enemy. But first, Jared, real quick yeah, here, we got some gangland. Fun. You know you weren't the one I was talking about being drunk right now. <laughs> you know who I was yeah, talking but, about. But Jared, got some got some uh, sloopcast news here. Yeah, we got some sloopcast news. Um, so <laughs> yeah, something about that. Um. We got some Sloopcast news. Um, now, some of you have already realized this because maybe you saw this pop into your your feed and you weren't looking for it. But hey, here we are anyway. Um, Kyle, we are. I want to. It's it's weird. Yes, I, I almost said it and then I pulled off. Did I did it on purpose? Sort of. What's weird is I almost want to say rejoin. I almost want to say rejoining. But it's not really rejoining. But it also kind of is rejoining because like. It feels it feels like it feels like the better version of an old thing it feels like the much better version. Get to the point already. Get. Gangland, it's called anticipation. Getting building some drama. It's a real back for the first time situation. Thank you, Esquire. That that, that sums it up pretty well. Uh, guys, we are back with Tony and Tom and the boys. We are officially a part of Buckeye Huddle. Um, as I said, I, and I'll still say it. You think I'll just because we're a part of Buckeye Huddle now that I won't say it? Because I will. Buckeye Huddle. It's like Buckeye Scoop without the assholes. <laughs> I've been I've been saying it for months. You think just because we're a part of the part of the family now, I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> uh so Jared moves to hashtag last in the host rankings. I thought I was already last in the ho in, in the host rankings. Y'all y'all had Kyle at number one forever, and then that's that's it because there's just two of us. Consistency. All right, let's. All right, so that's um. So that's that's part Tony's of that. Tony's not a host good. here. It's it's always good to be, um, be there with Tom, Tony, and um, Mark in the game there. So yeah, really appreciate it and looking forward to uh, it's great content here. So, all right, know your enemy, Michigan State Spartans. We should Kyle. We should probably let everyone know that we do because we might have some new people watching. Well, we'll have to we'll have to reset some stuff. We might have some new people watching. This is Know Your Enemy. We do this every Thursday. Um, this is where we preview the football game, uh, the Ohio State football game coming up. We will be releasing uh, to the public four episodes a week. Uh, Thursdays are Know Your Enemy. We actually sort of consider this the start of our week. Um, weirdly enough, uh, Friday, we do the slip picks. We'll pick uh, six additional games against the line. We pick Ohio State against the line. We'll do six more games on our Friday episode. Um, oh, shit. I forgot to give you my matchups to watch. Uh, you just listen. Fuck it. Do it live. That's it's all good. Um, the on Monday, we do an episode called Scarlet and Grade. That is G-R-A-D-E. Uh, that's where we grade Ohio State's uh, individual position groups and just talk about the game that happened. And then, no, it's great. No, it's not. I know. I made the logo. And on, <laughs> and on Tuesdays, we do Collegiate Chaos, which is just us reviewing the, the national, the, you know, the more national scope of games. 
All right, Kyle. Uh, know your enemy, the Michigan State Spartans. We had to do some self promo there. New people are watching. All right, Kyle. Sparty comes into this game two and three. Not, not the not the greatest not the greatest start for for Michigan State here. They started off strong. I mean, they started off two and zero, oh, but against the next schools. Yeah, and, but, uh, and against the pair of some, schools. And then, and then they uh, started playing some uh, power five teams, and uh, let's just say they haven't looked all that great. Listen, this this isn't the SEC. We know how to beat Mac schools here. That's all I'm saying. Listen, right. I'm I'm just saying, if you're the defending national champions, you shouldn't be down to the wire with Kent. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But 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 or or should or should or should Michigan State be here be and just say it's it's tough playing in the Big Ten. It's tough. Every game is tough in the Big Ten, Jared. Yeah, I, I love that. The, the uh, the the SEC apologists were like, well, I've, after Georgia struggled, like, hey, we we this is a mulligan. Every game's tough in the SEC, and like everyone just forgot about the Kent State game. But anyway, we're talking about Sparty. Yes. Then they so, proceeded yeah. to lose by eleven points to Washington. This was in Washington. Washington's a good team. You kind of yeah, almost I, wanted I, to give them a little pass. There. I would have given them a little pass there. Yes, but eleven's not great. No, no. 11 point loss isn't great beating Kent state by 17 after it being a one score game is respectable because the grit it required to win at home in the sec god gangland you're you're a little too good at that my man <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I, I, would, I would give sparty a little pass for washington but then the following week they hosted minnesota and it was not a game it was not, not a, a game at. Yeah, it's it's uh it was ugly. And I you know, we're not going to we're not going to do like a full game review of Minnesota versus Michigan State by any means. But if I can give you one stat, if I can give you one stat to tell you what this game was like. Minnesota possessed the ball for 42 and a half minutes. And if you're wondering or maybe you're just bad at math. That means Michigan State held the ball for only 17 minutes. Do the math, Jared. And just do the math. I don't have to do the math. It's in the box score. And uh, the game was, it was 34 nothing until Sparty scored touchdown with 17 seconds. So it was essentially 34 nothing for 99% of the game. Yeah. Or, or it was third. It was a shutout 99% of the game. <laughs> and, and then and then last weekend they lost to uh, Maryland 27 to 13. Not definitely not a not a good start for for Sparty here. Yeah, no, by by no means. Uh Nomad says because Thorne is good, uh Thorne completed about 66% of his passes. Uh only for about 132 yards and two interceptions, though. So Hey, why don't you have voice privileges? Um, because uh, you haven't earned them. Thorne is as good as a Rose Th Thorn would be at quarterback. Yeah. Damn it. I should have made an every Rose has a Thorn pun in your picks. Yeah, you really should have. Uh, yes. Buckeye Matt says Sparty will be fighting Indiana for the worst team in the Big Ten. I, I, should, I still want to give that to Nebraska at the moment, although they seem to be playing a little bit better now that they've been defrosted. I'm sticking yeah. by that joke. I don't care. Uh, so, I liked that joke. So Spar so Sparty, yeah, as, as we're trying to get to, uh, not 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 the not the Spartan team that we thought they could have been at the beginning of the year. If you remember, we we talked about at the start of the year. We just don't know who Michigan State is. They they lost some players. But we don't know if they're going to be that surprise team that does well, or they're just going to be, there's just going to be a crapshoot. And to come find out, Jared, it's it's uh, the crapshoot side. Only scoring, yeah. only scoring 27 points a game and uh, letting up 22 and a half per game, which isn't terrible. But when you're only putting up 27 and letting up 22, 
it doesn't look all that good. But guy Esquire says Kenneth Walker should get a cut of Mel, Mel Tucker's contract. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, some individuals have been voicing concerns about Ohio State playing on the road and being scared. I think they are dumb. Yeah, they're 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 dumb, dumb. I mean, yes, this is Ohio State's first road game. Here we are in uh, October, and this is their first road game. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm not scared. I, I've I've seen who I've seen enough of Ohio State and the depth that Ohio State has right now even with all the injuries that they've had uh, beginning of the year, I really, really like the development for this team this year. Yeah. And Ohio state has legitimately been playing. Um, some people that's, yeah, uh, no, I think, I think gangland's uh, no man. I think gangland's specifically talking about that other uh, discord server. He's on, which is filled with children. If we're being honest, um, if we look at, uh, some of the rankings, um, or not necessarily some of the rankings, but if we look at the defenses that Ohio state's played so far this year, they've actually played, like, if you really go through Ohio state's, uh, schedule so far, they've really played like a bunch of great teams as far as like defensively speaking, they've defensively played a lot of great teams this year, even if they, you know, Notre Dame's offense didn't put it together and so on and so forth. Right. Um, this is I Kyle and I, I, and I, and I get that like Arkansas state was on the schedule and like we had some, we had some non power five teams on. Okay. But, Based off of expectation, at least, is this the worst defense Ohio State's played so far this year? Yeah. Yeah, I, w I would say so. I would say so. I just. Yeah, I, I yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and like, again, like Toledo, realistically, probably worse defensively speaking, if we're just, but like, we know that like that's Toledo. We, you know, it's, there's a talent mismatch there. Everyone knows that, but Michigan state, considering the talent that they have, or at least should have as one of the, you know, betterish programs in the big 10, it's, it's just not come together for them from a, from a defensive standpoint. I think that's pretty fair to say. Um, they're giving up over 400 yards a game. And again, please, please keep in mind that their schedule like Maryland has a is an OK offense. Minnesota has a predictable. Um, but as long as they have Ibrahim, a very effective offense, they don't have Ibrahim. Not so much as we saw from Minnesota last week. Um, yep. Washington's not like some sort of offensive juggernaut, but still a good team. And then there's like Akron and Western Michigan on their schedule. So even with like that considered. Still giving up over 400 yards a game, um, giving up nearly 300 yards a game passing, giving up nearly 150 on the ground each game. And I they they have individuals on this defense they they have some really good individuals on this defense so i don't want this to come across like they got nothing there's no talent here because they do they do have some really good individuals defensively on this team but they aren't putting it together at this point correct yeah <laughs> gangland so, um, gangland says well it's a glorified farm school nomad says isn't that all of the big 10 uh <laughs> Fun fact, Michigan State uh, started as an A&M. If that means anything to you, they, they were yeah. originally Michigan A&M. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Jared was mentioning, they, they got some pretty good players on the defense there. Um, I think everybody knows the name of Cal Halliday. Uh, their star linebacker, uh, Jacoby uh, Winman. Uh, that stellar defensive end that they that he has. Hey, Jared. So uh, Jacoby has one fumble recovery for the season, but also five 
forced fumbles already. So he's averaging a forced fumble for every game. Definitely someone to keep an eye on. I mean, that's that's a that's a ridiculous stat. And I don't know, like, I have to assume at a certain point, it's not an anomaly, right? Five forced fumbles at a certain point is no longer an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he had and three in three games, eh, maybe we can say anomaly. And I'm not I'm not saying he's going to keep the pace. Don't don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm not saying he's going to keep the pace, but that's a lot. Yeah, and he ha and he has eight tackles for loss and five and a half sacks already. So averaging a sack a game there. It's a yeah, definitely the player on that defense. Uh, Ohio State really has to watch out for, and they have some other um, in their safety. Um, Kendall Brooks is just all over the field. He's literally he's every, he's all over the field. There has forty seven tackles already for the year and leads the team. Uh, so, so that that brings up the question here with, with a okay defense because I, I think overall uh, Spartans has an okay defense, but I think that's a be, compliment that they don't deserve. They're an okay defense that I think could be much better, but I, Kyle, I'm, we I'm we know not, from experience the last not not this year the previous two years as Ohio State fans. We know it is possible to have a talented defense that isn't putting it together. We we yeah. know this from experience. Ohio State has had some amazing talents on amazing, amazingly talented players in 2020 and 2021. But that doesn't mean that they were make that doesn't mean they collectively were making a good defense. And I think to a lesser extent, they don't have Ohio State's talent, obviously, but to a lesser extent, I think we're seeing that with Michigan State right now, like legitimately some very talented players on this defense, but it's not coming together. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to add up some things here, Jared, but um, but yeah, I was I was averaging what Ohio State's score was for the past what was that uh, six games that Ohio State's played played Sparty. Oh, okay. Played Sparty specifically. I was yeah. curious what, yep. where, where you're, well, I was like, why six? <laughs> Over 40 each, except for 2018, Gangland says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are, yep, they averaged over the last six games, 38.8 .8 points per game. Did you uh yeah. did you do the math on how much they're letting up in that time? That's what I'm doing right now as I am talking, and they are letting up nine points per game. So it is a 30, I'm just gonna round up just 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 because 39 to 9 average score, Jared. I I feel like the Sparty score is gonna is gonna be about in that area. Uh, and I feel like Ohio State's gonna score a lot more points than that. I feel like they and, and like again, like I'm I know I'm not talking up Sparty too hard here. Um we score 56 men, Nomad says. Well, that's that's what Ohio State scored last last uh year, 56 to 7 last year. Uh I, 56 in order to get to 56, they're gonna have to start the game like they started the game against Wisconsin. Um yes. So like, don't muff a punt, I think is, is maybe the takeaway there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Trey goes for 150 and three touchdowns. I, I don't know if they're giving Trey that much right now, right now. Um, I think they still got him on a pitch count at the moment. We, but we I, saw I so Ryan Day said of um, what are the cornerbacks this week? that he's healthy he's fine yeah thank thank you gangland it was ha it was hancock like he's healthy he's fine he's 100 percent. he's ready to go and eh, but we're probably going to sit him out until after the bye week which probably like unintentionally says something about uh michigan state's passing attack which is not not good um but also take that logic take what he said about Jordan Hancock and ask yourself if that strategy 
if that thinking is applying to some of the other players that everyone's very concerned about right now. Mm -hmm. Henderson. KJ, I almost called him KJ Hill again. Why do I keep doing that? JSN. Uh, they're treating this like a bowl game. JSN is about to do a but No, he's not. No. No. Here, everyone keeps making this JSN Bosa. Bosa needed surgery. Very key difference there. I, you're ma I, Gangland, I kind of know you're making fun of those people. I know that. But yeah, no, J J I just don't expect JSN to be back until after the bye week. I think that's probably a thing that we can expect for a lot of the players who've been kind of playing, kind of not playing. So, I, you know, keep an eye on that. For Yes, for Penn State. Exactly. All right, that's... All right. Uh, some other other players to keep a note note on. I mean, everybody knows Peyton Thorne. Uh, Jared briefly covered him a little bit. Uh, the running back Jalen Berger, uh, 301 yards, four touchdowns for the year, uh, 59 carries, which is a which is a pretty good average. But uh, again, I'm not I'm not worried about this Michigan State offense to score a lot of points here. And their their main target um, out in the wide out position is a uh, Keon Coleman who leads the team with 25 receptions, 308 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah. Um, Any, anybody, they also anybody have a uh, Broussard at running back. Who's had a fair number of carries uh, has 177 on the season. Um, but Ohio state has, has, has held some really good running backs to not much this year. Um, Again, uh, Kyle mentions Thorn. Thorn's completing like just under 65%. Um, his, his average is only about 6.9 right now. Nice. Um, he has only two more touchdowns than he currently has interceptions. And while I do think, I do, I do think Coleman's a good wide receiver. I don't know if it matters at this point. Um, you know, I, I try, I try, I try not to, I try not to uh, over, over hype things because like, if you, if you come on here and you over hype what you think is going to happen. And then Ohio state has like an okay win, like 42 to 10, but half of those came in the second half and everyone is real pissy because uh, they're only up 21 nothing in the first half or something you know then it's just like oh jared you told us it was going to be easy so like you know years of doing this podcast it sort of has made me nervous to come out and say hey guys i think this is going to be a slaughter so i'm trying to stop myself from saying hey guys i think this is going to be a slaughter <laughs> but jared 42 to 10 as an okay win shouldn't be a thing but <laughs> that's true. I agree but with you, know you that it shouldn't be. But, but how but, long have you, I been doing this? But you know what? You know what? Uh, Nomad though, forty-two to ten, I would take. It, it's it's a cover. <laughs> Ohio State is a twenty-seven and a half point favorite. But by I'm the way, not with that. Not all forty-two. No, not all forty-two to tens. Not all forty-two to tens are the same. If Ohio State scores thirty-five in the first half. And then, welcome, Austin. And then, you know, the second half ends up being like, you know, if, if, the, if the first half is 35 to three and the second half is seven to seven, everyone's fine with that. If it's yeah. 21 and 21, then people will get pissy. That I just I've, I've, I've watched I've watched the ebbs and flows of Ohio State fan emotional reactions to games for for too long kyle i don't think the slideshow is slide showing so that's talk fine. for a second i'm gonna fix it that's fine well i was gonna say well i think that's enough talk about the the players here i'm um, talking about about the team as a whole so i think we should uh start going into uh some of our picks here so um 
every every week during our uh, Know Your Enemy, we have uh, somebody in our um, one of our patrons or one of our slip cats uh, to be our guest picker. And this week we have Buckeye Esquire, who will be picking alongside us for uh, for today's episode here. Uh, so the first one, first one we're going to do, Jared, is uh, Ohio State player to watch. So what's the one player to watch out for the Buckeyes in this matchup? Uh, okay, sorry. It's, sorry. <laughs> I, the, the, the slideshow is slideshowing now. Um, the For Ohio State, I think for me, I, I'd really like to see a game where they're just efficient as hell. Just absolutely as efficient as hell. Um, and I think that always, almost always starts up front. Um, so to me, I'm going to look at the offensive tackles because as Kyle pointed out, Jacoby Winman's a, is a monster. And, you know, we recently have had some stuff come out about how dominant Paris Johnson Jr. has been. He has not given up a sack. He has not given up a sack yet as a Buckeye, I believe. Um, yeah, Paris yeah, that, is a top, nope. he is a top ten nope. pick. So that my was, player was... to watch will be will be Paris Johnson Jr. Kyle, oh, oh, I just now scrolled down to the notes, and Kyle already got there. I did, but you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pick. I'll pick Dewan Jones because you know the defensive end should sure. swap sides there. So I'll go with Dewan Jones. Both tackle, both tackles, both tackles are who um, Ohio State should be. Uh, is who you should be watching on the, for the Buckeyes here. So Buckeye Esquire um, in our chat here um, says here player to watch. He has Fleming. See you, Nomad. He, he has, uh, yeah, he has Fleming, uh, Julian Fleming as uh, the player to watch. Uh, he says he's been stacking good games, and I want to see he, the next level. Defense, give me, give me JT. Want to see him around the QB and being disruptive. Uh, Jacoby has six sacks already. Our tackles versus him to keep Stroud clean, to carpet bomb. Their shit secondary is my matchup while we're on offense. Uh, while Buckeyes are on defense, I'm going to watch the D line looking for sacks ideally, but obvious pressure from our ends affecting Thorne will be good to also Burke versus himself is the other matchup I'm interested in. So, so that's a good point about, uh, I think coach Noel has mentioned a little bit about the lack of sack, the, the lack of sacks, the lack of uh, stats from the defensive line. And he, he's like, he's like, I'm, it, it seems like that he was fine with that. He didn't have any issues because they're being what you said, they're being disruptive. They're creating um, opportunities for the linebackers, which is why we're seeing the linebackers just be dominant so far this year. They're just doing their role to, to fill in the, the gaps for the linebackers to, to make plays. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what Kyle and I have been saying as well. Um, all right. And the enemy, the Spartan player to watch. I mean, it's it's Jacoby, Jared. Uh, <laughs> the answer is Jacoby. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll pick someone different just to make it interesting. I think both uh, I think you and, and and me during the player to watch segment and Buckeye Esquire just now explained why I think that is the correct answer. But for the sake of a conversation, I'll pick someone else and I'll go Kendall Brooks um Kendall Brooks uh, Kyle leading the team with tackles correct um yeah. and and is uh tied for second or maybe is second uh in the tackles for loss we talked a lot a lot about how Winman has five no yeah that's 0.5 <laughs> oh Kyle when you do a 0.5 you need to put a zero in the in the thing buddy. <laughs> that's 0.5 all right, but uh, we talked a lot about how Winman has uh, five forced fumbles on the year. Brooks has three. Like, say what you want to say about the Sparty defense, and, and most of it would be right, just so we're clear. They yeah, are they good have, at forcing. They are good at forcing fumbles. Yeah, I think they have nine forced fumbles for the for the year, and of those nine, they've recovered seven of them. So the lack of 
interceptions that the Spartans defense has, which they have zero, they're making they're making it up on the fumbles. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, but so yeah, I'll I'll go I'll go Kendall Brooks. I think uh, especially considering I think Ohio State's probably going to break through the front seven pretty frequently. Um, Kendall Brooks will be in charge of sort of being that third line to to get some tackles on whoever the you know I I assume it'll be Chop whoever the primary running back is this week, and also to you know try and keep the the Flemings and the Marvin Harrisons and the Emeka Bukas of the world from you know scoring from seventy yards out. Yeah, uh, the key matchup here I really like I really like what uh, uh, Esquire said in in his um in what I mentioned just just recently here. And that was uh, Burke versus himself. I, I, I really like that part. Uh, we know how how great uh, Denzel Burke can be, and this year has definitely been a down year so far. And yeah, I I really like that. I really like that. It, it only takes one game for him to really just get back into it, and then all of a sudden you have a you you finish the season strong here. I, I really really like that um that that thought there, uh, Esquire. Uh, but for my but for my uh, key matchup, honestly, it's it's continuing to develop those defensive backs, and maybe maybe it is Burke really stepping up here. Uh, but I, I don't think the Spartans are going to really be able to run run as well. I mean, nobody has against Ohio State so far. Uh, so continuing to uh, not let. Uh, Peyton Thorne try to pass the ball, which he hasn't been all that successful in his time at uh, Michigan State versus Ohio State. But I want to I want to see that continue on uh, this year. So I'm, I'm I'll, I'll stick with the um, corner. I'll stick with the corners locking down, being uh, locking down their receivers. Uh, Austin, yeah, you can. We can I hold each other to to harder standards than we hold the guest pickers. <laughs> Because we have to do this every week. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we have to make sure we don't sound repetitive. That's all. I know it was a joke. <laughs> uh, key matchup to me. Um, I, I think one of the things that will allow the Ohio State offense to score a bunch of points and be incredibly dominant and put this game away quickly will be time of possession in a, in a sense they, they don't need to hold the ball a lot, but they do need to hold the Spartans to some three and outs, get off the field, get things going. Um, and to me, the, the way you do that most effectively um, is through your defensive ends, either by crashing the line or by, you know, forcing the quarterback out of the pocket, even if you're not getting the sack. I know we want the sacks, but even if you're not getting it, um, as long as you're disrupting the pass. Um, so to me, uh, I'll go with, uh, I think this week I'm going to go with uh, Tui Molalau, um against whichever offensive tackle he happens to be lined up against. Uh, so I, I think that's that's where I'm going to go at this point. Okay. Awesome. All right. And we will be picking this spread. Uh, well, it's up to 27 now, but uh, when we locked it in, it, it was at 25 and a half, which makes me, uh, <clears throat> that make, makes me feel a lot better about my, uh, my pick here, Jared. But uh, uh, yeah, to no surprise, I I've got Ohio state to, uh, to cover the spread and I believe cover it easily. And I'm going to go with, uh, exactly what happened last year. I have Ohio State 56, Sparty 7. That's which, Jared, Jared, it's if you, an okay. If you can do the math, if you can do the math, Jared, it, does yeah. that cover? It does, but it's not, but it's not nice. I know, I know it's not, it's <laughs> never been nice yet. It, it was it was fifty nine last week, and, and we always joked around like, oh, oh, we're, yeah, whatever. It was fifty nine last week, but whatever. 
Uh, I'll go 59. Right, what, what do you got, Jared? I got 59 to 10. All right, of course. Because nice. Of course, Jared. Because nice. Because <laughs> nice. All right. You want to you wanna read off what uh, Buckeye Esquire has to say? Yeah, no, I, I took a look at this one uh, before we started, and I was like, hey, Kyle, this one's pretty <laughs> Greek. Do you want me to handle it? And then he uh, he got to, uh, he didn't get to the first period before he said, yeah, Jared, you handle this one. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, this is a game prediction by our patron and uh, Discord member, Buckeye Esquire. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. In 480 BC, the Akitaman, Akitaman, uh, Persian Empire sought to roll over the various city-states of Greece at a narrow pass in a region known as Thermopylae. A coalition of Spartans assembled in defiance of the vastly overwhelming Persian horde. The outcome was preordained after a brief delay, the Persians overwhelmed Sparty and conquered Athens. Saturday will be much the same with less Gerard Butler. Mel Tucker has no king. Uh, Mel Tucker has no king. Leonidas was that supposed to be? Was that supposed to be? Is no? Anyway, uh, has no king. Uh, there will be no valent stand. Sparty is going to take the L from the first snap until they let uh, Devon Brown kneel. <laughs> Devin Brown, Neil, with uh, 48 seconds remaining on the clock, like the famed Thunder Ohio State rolls. I I, I did I did not do bad on that. Yes, uh, Esquire is actually a lawyer. In case anyone was maybe confused about that. <laughs> uh, I didn't see. I didn't see what your score was. Do, do you have a final score, Esquire? 63 to 6. Because Nice. Nice. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh Kyle, some of us can we're... some of us can stick to the joke. All right. Before before we go into um our ask sloopcast question here or questions, uh, you got anything else for Sparty here? Um, again, like if, if Ohio state can get up big, if they can score quickly, this will look a lot more like Wisconsin, uh, than it did, uh, last week. So yeah, I, I, that's, I, I, I to me, the final score doesn't even matter a ton as long as they cover. Um, to me, this is more about Ohio state scoring quickly like don't 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 just don't don't just win by whatever the final you know don't just win by 35 points be winning by 35 points at the half or 28 points at the half and then pick up the seven on the back half um yeah it's to me i'm more interested in what happens in the first half because i i really and maybe even the first quarter because i think that will affect not necessarily the outcome of the game because i think ohio state wins this without much real concern um but how like we feel about the game all right all right let's get into uh the ask sloop cast question and of course we have austin austin formations uh over unders all right. All right, so we will start off with Mayan Williams. He has Mayan Williams rushing yards in this game, 89 and a half yards. Over. Yep, over. I Because I, I just don't, I don't expect to see Henderson in this game a lot. I Again, kind of what I was talking about with Jordan Hancock earlier. That's, that's how I see that playing out. All right, and we have uh, Jesse uh, Mirko punts. At two and a half. You, you, you almost got me. You almost you almost got me there because you put uh, Jesse micro 
It's Jesse Murko. You almost <laughs> got me there. <laughs> um, Austin, by the way, points out that Chop averages 93 and a half. And in games without Henderson, he averages 97. How, in, including what games? Is that just this this year, out of curiosity? Yeah, that's that's a total. You you point out an autocorrect, Kyle. That's not cool. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, so I included what? the two or three this year, basically. Okay. So Mirko has punted fifteen times this year. So an average of three times a game, on average. Uh, of those fifth of those fifteen punts, ten of those are inside the twenty yard line. Only one has been a touchback, and probably the mo one of the most uh, stellar stats I've seen here. Total yards returned by opponent. Battle was zero. I don't. Yeah, I. I don't know if I've seen a legit return attempt. I don't think. I, I don't nope. think there's been anything more dramatic than a fair catch. Rutgers did try gangland says. Okay. Dude got lit up right away. Yeah. Now that you mentioned that, I do um, remember it. You know, I'm going to say over just because you do have the second team who comes in and uh, there tends to be more point punts that happen. So I'm, I'm going to go over. I'll go over. Yeah. I think, I, I think we'll might be a bit nervous about this one. Uh, like at halftime, <laughs> but then we'll pick up the rest. There'll probably be like one, in the first half and two in the second half would be my prediction. So yeah, I'll, I'll say, I'll say over as well. All right. Uh, Ohio state offensive third down efficiency, 58.49%. Hmm. I'm gonna go, man, it's real hard. Cause so, like, I feel like while the game's still competitive, it'll be over. But I just worry about, like, the back half of the game dragging that down. It sounds like it should it, be over. It does sound that way, Austin. It, it sounds, and, and they're averaging right now, well, yeah, their their conversion for the year is 60.34%, which is crazy good. Crazy good. Um, I don't yeah, know. I, and I'm Michigan go, State I, I, is currently letting up um 44 percent i'm good i'm gonna go under i'll go under i think it'll be really close but I'll, I'll go just a tad under for for that uh third down efficiency uh i'm gonna go yeah it's a very good number austin um it's i'm gonna go over but like just barely over, I think. All right. All right. We have the, uh, the duo linebackers, Steele and Tommy at 14 and a half tackles combined. Now that feels like an easy over, doesn't it? Over. I'll take the over on that one too. It, I feel uh, it, it feels easy, but I, I know Austin well enough to know that it's probably not that e easy. They average less than that per game. See, like that, that's, that's why I was, that's why I was hedging it. Um, and honestly, like I, I kept saying, I, this feels like an easy over. This feels like an easy over. And then it's, I, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like Sparty is going to give up on the run pretty quickly, which will just slaughter these numbers for them. Yeah, it, it could. It really So could, I'm going to yes. go, I'm going to go under here. Um, I, Michigan's not going to have any luck throwing it. They're going to go down, or excuse me, not, well, they're not going to be throwing it either. They're not going to have any luck running it. They're going to be down pretty quickly. They're going to lean into the pass. Michigan State is already a pretty uh, pass heavy team. Um, well, not that heavy. 55% uh, of the time they pass. So, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to go under here. Okay. Uh, CJ Stroud's yards per attempt. 10.49. It's a big number. That is. I'm going to go under with that. He is right now averaging 
per attempt, 10.3. I'm going to go over because I think... I'll go under. I, I'm going to go over because I, I don't... I don't particularly like this Michigan State defense. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then total game turnovers. So I'm going to guess turnovers as a total for the entire game at two and a half. So you got you got Sparty that can that causes fumbles, and you have Ohio State that's not okay. great turnover. Uh, yeah, it, not they're not great, turnovers. but they're not bad. They're kind of I feel like that they're kind of in the middle of the road. I I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I'll go. You know, I'll go under. I'll go under for this one. I will as well. This feels like a two turnover game. One each. All right, and last one, Ohio State receivers with at least one touchdown at two and a half. I will take. And he said receivers. He didn't say wide receiver. So I'm taking the over. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let, let's get clarification from Austin on that. Oh, he said wide, wide receivers rec only. Okay. Uh, I'll go. I'll go under. Um, with at least one touchdown. I'll go under. I'm going to go under as well, because you have like three primary wide receivers. This would require all of them to get multiple touchdowns or no, excuse me. They'd all get one touchdown. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm I, I, Ryan Day feels like it feels like right now, Ryan Day has a thing to prove like inside the 10 yard line, he's bound and determined to crash it into the end zone. Like he sure. is trying to prove a point. Um, oh yeah. I'm not against it. Just saying. Yeah. And exactly. Matt Stover has been getting a lot of those. Um, well, I think that's what he's saying. Austin, he's saying that he'll, he'll steal one away because there's only going to be so many passing touchdowns. And if, Stover steals one or two. See, I'm going to go under here. Oh, gosh, this is a good number. Um, I feel like it's going to be primarily running touchdowns this week, so I'm going to. I'm going to go under, but I also think Ohio State can potentially break a lot of long ones just through. Austin, yeah, I think they will also run it a lot. But my concern is, is that like when they get inside the 10. Then they tend to just sort of pound it, really. Um, but I also think that Ohio State can get a lot done after the catch. So that would lead to a lot of long touchdowns. This one, this one, this one has me spinning. Um, I've talked to myself in and out like four times. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go, I'll go under, I'll go under. Yeah. I feel like this game gets wrapped up pretty quickly, which could see the backups come in, which could eliminate one of the three wide receivers from getting a touchdown this week. Um, yeah. Do the old, right, that's it. Uh, do the old hide the wide receiver at tight end like we did with Gin circa, yeah. <laughs> Team, I feel like defenses are smarter than that nowadays. But also, we're kind of hiding the wide receiver at tight end with uh, G. Scott. <laughs> so, two touchdowns of thirty plus yards. Uh, a prediction from Buckeye Esquire. I I would so if 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 it's at one and a half, I'd take the over on that. All right, and that is it. That is all the questions from Austin here, and that is know your enemy for this week. Got, yeah, got anything else before we wrap it up, Jared? No, I, I think I think we're good. Um, thank you, Esquire, for some uh, with with some uh, well written uh, guest picker stuff. Thank you, Austin, as always for the over unders. Um, Thank you, uh, all the new people who might be seeing us through Buckeye Huddle for giving us a chance, especially if you've stayed this long. Um, we greatly appreciate you. So uh, I guess um, 
because because you're new here, I might have to do a little bit of this. Um, we also have our own YouTube channel. You can find that at uh, youtube.thesleepcast.com. On that YouTube channel, uh, we actually have a bunch of highlights. So if you kind of want to see what other things we've done, um, just sort of some of our older content from this season, um, Kyle uh, edits some really great uh, like one minute ish one minute and under highlights. You can find those on YouTube as well. Um, you can also find those on Instagram and TikTok. As, so you can also find those there as well as on uh, Twitter. Um, the And if you're looking for any of our other links, so if you're like, oh, Jared, you said Instagram and Twitter and, and, and TikTok and all that. If you're looking for links, you can just go to the sloopcast.com. It's just a page filled with links that can get you to all of our stuff, including our, our Patreon, which like if this is your first time listening. You're probably not going to sign up for the Patreon right away. But hey, maybe may, maybe you do. Maybe you do. <laughs> um, we have T-shirt stores, um, including merch.thesloopcast.com, which has like a lot of uh, Ohio State adjacent but not trademark infringing merchandise. Um, Donate just $3 a month on Patreon to help Kyle as his family grows. We don't got a guilt. We don't, we don't got to do that. Um, all right, Kyle, that's it. That, that's all I got. Do you have anything uh, we, we call the end part of this show Kyle's Corner? Do you have anything? Uh, this is just Kyle giving us some sometimes unrelated, sometimes related uh, little tidbit of something at the end of the show. We call it Kyle's Corner. Yeah, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And I'm going to stick with the Columbus crew, Jared. And the Columbus crew, like in crew fashion this year, ended up tying today, Jared. They were up 2 nothing, and then let up the tying goal in extra stoppage. Kyle, one of our close friends is a uh, high school <laughs> soccer coach. And one of the things he has drilled into my head is that there's no worse lead than 2-0. <laughs> <laughs> It's like just yeah, enough so, to it's just like just so enough a, to get you to like pull back a little bit. Yeah. So they so here's a sec. The crew dropped 11 points in the 90th minute or later this season. Three more than any other team has dropped in a single season in MLS history. Not good. Not good. It, it's, okay. it's pretty much a it's pretty much a must win game against um, Orlando. Is it Orlando? Yeah, I think it's Orlando this weekend, this Sunday. It's it's a must, must win. Well, that's a, yeah, you're they, assuming they have to win or tie, yeah, they have to win or tie. But you know what? You 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 play you play to win the game. But but Austin, they're Orlando's currently losing like they, you know. Um. Buckeye Esquire, I, I have to call you out here. I said something very nice about you before. How many seasons ago was it that Know Your Enemy had the Screamo Know Your Enemy intro? Did you just call Rage Against the Machine Screamo? I'm just going to let you live in that. All right, and that's it. That is it, Jared. That is all we have for today. You you just you just have to you just have to live with that, Esquire. You just meant the screaming voice, shorthand way to describe. Read my words, damn it. <laughs> uh yeah, but like dudes have been screaming into the microphone since the 60s. Like, you can't. Okay, I, 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 we, no, I, I, I need to. I, I, no, I just, I just need to. I keep, and no, God, you just called Rage Against the Machine Screamo. Oh God, tonight's the show's over. The show's over. Um, if you're new here, if you're new here, uh, we always play. Um, an Ohio-based band to end the show. Um, we don't actually play the music on YouTube though, because YouTube's real, real, real funicky about 
that stuff. Uh, sink the ship. We can do sink the ship. Yeah, we'll we'll do uh, sink the ship tonight. Um, my shiny teeth in me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll do that. Um, we'll we'll do that. So yeah, we'll we'll do. But okay, we'll, we're, that's the song we're doing. We'll do sink the ship. We'll do their cover of my shiny teeth and me because it is it is basically great. How on earth did that trigger RefBot? I don't want to know. Someone tell me after we stop recording. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the show. Again, uh, we don't actually play music on the YouTube version of the show. We do play YouTube. We do play music on the uh, podcast version of the show. Um, but if you still want to hear the song, uh, we always put a link to the song down in the description. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Sink the Ship.